So here is a video at Zarafat. I have heard many sermons on this subject. Many preachers said that we should give money to God so that we will be blessed. But today I wanted to share the insights what God has given me. Okay, if we read from uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, verse 8, there the word of God says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. When I came to the airport, Pastor Jock asked me, Can you remember me? Because it was uh, almost like 17 years back I saw him. I told him, Yes, I can uh, recognize you because I see your latest picture on Facebook. In those days, there were no pictures. There were no pictures. There were no emails. There were no mobile phones. It took faith, Elijah, to go unto her. Do you know what made Elijah to recognize that she's the woman that God has prepared for him to sustain? He saw she was gathering the sticks. Hallelujah. See, in this passage, we see five things. I wanted to compare these five things. Gathering of sticks is reading the Bible. Number two, we see water, which I wanted to compare with money. Number three, I wanted to compare bread with the time. And number four, we see meal, which I wanted to compare with the physical blessing. And number five, we see oil in this passage, which I wanted to compare with the spiritual blessing. Remember, the widow situation is she's about to die. When she went to gather the sticks, which I wanted to compare as reading the word, there she had encounter with the prophet. Hallelujah. So your situation may look like, you know, you are about to die. There is no hope. But when you read the word during that time, it will help you to encounter what God has prepared for you. So this woman, when she went to gather the sticks, there, the prophet met her. Here, the prophet Elijah asking her to fetch a little water in a vessel that he may drink. In verse 11, And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. When the prophet told her to bring water, she was willing to to give that. Do you know people are willing to give money to God? When a preacher tells that if you buy this oil, you are going to get healed. You know, people are ready to buy oil. People are ready to donate to God, to get his favor. Here the woman was ready to give water. When prophet saw that she was about to give him the water, then he said to her, Wait a minute. I just don't want your offerings. I just don't want your money. What I want from you is in verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. I need bread. Before you go and get the water, I need bread. This bread is the time that we spend with God. Hallelujah. What God is expecting from us is a relationship with God before you give your money to God. No matter how much you give, that may not please God. But when you spend time with God, it is pleasing to Him. Hallelujah. Here we see when the prophet asked her to bring a bread, 
she started to complain. She did not complain when the prophet asked her to bring water. There is a famine at that time. And that famine is not because of recession. That famine is not because of financial difficulty, nor because of some war. The famine there is because it did not rain for three and a half years. We can understand how hard it is to get water at that time. Is it not the same? When people don't have money, they still go and borrow and give money to God to get God's favor. The woman is doing the same thing. It is a famine that occurred because of lack of water. But still she is ready to go and give water to the prophet. But when the prophet asked her to give bread, then she starts to complain. Verse 12 says, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress in for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. She starts to complain. How many people start to complain if they hear God is expecting your time from you? Many people in India... When I tell them, you read the Bible, spend time with God, which will help you to follow him. They say, I'm too busy. I don't have time to read the word. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to pray. So, pastor, will you please pray for me? Yes, I will pray for you. Do you know what I will pray? I will pray that you will have time to pray to God. And do you know what the prophet Elijah said here? And in verse 13, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Remember, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. The prophet said, Fear not. When she heard, Fear not, her fear has left. Hallelujah. She had a fear of death. She thought she and her son are going to die within a few days. But when she heard God saying, fear not, she lost fear. So now she started to do what she was asked to do. The prophet, what he is telling is, but make me thereof a little cake first. Please understand the words here, how the Holy Spirit is putting together. And after. So don't make it everything at once. You have to make a piece of cake first and then make for thee and for thy son. We try to mix God's time with other things. If you wake up lately, do you know what you will be skipping? You will skip reading the word, but you will not skip watching the movie. The bread is a time, is a relationship with God. So what Elijah is telling to her, what the word of God is telling to us this morning is, you have to spend time with God first. Hallelujah. When you wake up, the first thing you should do is to spend time with him. If you can do that first, the next verse we see. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Remember in those days, there were no gas stoves. Do you understand what gas stove is? And there were no electrical stoves. We use gas stoves in India. There were no gas stoves and there were no electrical stoves in those days. To get fire from the firewood, it will take some time. And the second thing is, in those days, there were no nonstick pans, which will heat very quickly. I had the experience of cooking 
bread or cake on ordinary pan it takes some time to heat up so here she's not complaining to the prophet oh prophet it will take more time to fire the sticks it will take some time for me again to heat up the pan so let me make all the cake at once and then bring you something to eat it is so practical in our lives we always feel it is so difficult to give my time to read the word ayo i have this work i have to do that thing i have to go there i have to go here so every time you wanted to read the word every time you wanted to spend time with god the devil wants to remind you of the work that you have to do on the day and try to you know mix up the cake try to mix your time that you should be giving to god and uh, verse 15 says and she went and did accordingly to the saying of elijah and she and he and her home did eat many days praise be to god the meal is a physical blessing the oil is spiritual blessing do anyone know why you use oil while you cook we use oil in india to get taste so in the same way there won't be any meaning to physical blessings without spiritual blessings there are many people in this world who are physically blessed they have money they have cars they have you know homes but they missed oil in their lives india is not a poor country you know you see some of the billionaires in india and at the same time you see poorest of the poor people in india you know the rich people in india those who do not know the lord are struggling they are committing suicides they are missing something in their life even though they have all kinds of mean physical blessings but they don't have oil which is a spiritual blessing and do you know there are poorest of the poor christians in india who rejoice in the lord in their lack who rejoice in the lord in their suffering because they realize that this oil this spiritual blessing will give them everything that they needed hallelujah that's what jesus concluded you know on the sermon on mount matthew 6:33 says but when you seek first the kingdom and righteousness of god everything will be added unto you i never prayed for my house i never prayed for the things of this world but god has given me because i was prospering in my spirit so he has prospered me in everything i lack nothing i'm here standing and testifying god i lack nothing but what you need to do is every day morning if you can give your time to god fast as the prophet said neither shall the cruise of the oil fail nor barrel of meal shall not waste how we spend time with god 1 john 17 says but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin so we need to walk in the light to have fellowship with god to spend time with god we need to walk in the light what is light some 119 105 says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path so word of god is light you need light to have fellowship with god if you don't have word there is no way that you can have fellowship with god so i encourage you to read the word the light to have fellowship with god to spend time with god i don't know the culture here but in india if someone comes to my house and if he is a stranger i just give him a glass of water but if he is a close relative to me i invite him for a meal when i had my lunch at pastor jock's dining table 
he asked me, what would you like to drink with your meal? Do you like Coke? Do you like orange juice? He know if I eat something, I need something to drink. Is there anyone that invites someone to their house and just give a meal and don't give water to them, something to drink? There is no one. So when you give a meal to God, you will offer him what you should be offering to him. Hallelujah. Do you know what God wants from you first? Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I am at the door knocking. Do you know for what? I want her to come to you, not to drink, but to have supper. Because God wants us to have a relationship with him. A supper, a meal, a time of fellowship, you know, praising him, praying to him, reading his word. Will help us to give to God. I have a special concern for this country because we are blessed by the missionaries who came from this country. They brought the gospel, they brought medical care, they brought, you know, uh, education, everything. So we are blessed in return to that. I wanted to do something for this nation, but I have been distributing tracts on the streets. I wanted to see America not only generously giving to the poor countries, but I wanted to see American people, American believers, should be having a personal relationship with God. So I request you to read the Bible, spend time with God every day, morning, so you will lack nothing in your life. Let us examine our lives. Oh, my dear brother and sister, if you are in a depression, if you see your situation, if you see your circumstances that you are about to die, there is nothing left in your hands. The Holy Spirit is asking you to gather sticks. Come on, it's time to read the word. In your depression, if you read the word, it will help you to come out of that. Prophet Jeremiah was in a depression. He had no hope. He lost hope. But when he started to remind God's word, you know, he had a hope that we are not consumed because he is a faithful God. His mercies are new every morning. So if you are in a kind of a situation where you are feared about your disease, feared about your financial difficulties, feared about whatever the situations that you are going through, you need to read the word because the word of the Lord telling to that widow, fear not. If you can hear that word, you will give back your time to God. There won't be waste. There won't be a failure in your life. If you give me the time of fellowship in your life. Are you treating Jesus as a stranger and just trying to give him water, the money and send him away? My dear brother and sister. Jesus is knocking at your door not to just have a drink. He wanted to sup with you. He wanted to have a fellowship with you. Come on, ask God. Forgive me, Lord. Oh, I know how it hurts a person who comes to have a dine with you just to give him a drink. How many times we have grieved Holy Spirit. How many times he came with the intention to have a supper with us. But we just sent him away with money. The Lord is opening his arms and saying to you, Oh, my dear child, I wanted to have dine with you every day morning. I wanted to have fellowship with you. I want you to read my word so that you will know the truth and the truth can set you free from every kind of situation. So, let's ask God for his favor. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Thank you for being with us, Lord. Thank you for the every scripture that you have inspired to be written so that we can read and get hope in the time of hopeless, so that we can get assurance at the time of fear and failure, Lord. 
Lord, let your word continue to give us faith, continue to give us strength, continue to give us light so that we can walk in the light as you are in the light so that we can have fellowship with you and dine with you and that which will help us to give drink also, Lord. I give you all the glory, honor, and power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.